at we stop at talk i mean talk n d i a i mean hey, everybody pay attention everybody pay attention please pay attention everybody it's really here so just pay attention now i told you if your plane of conductor i mean in the plane of this coil this is a rectangular coil this is a rectangular what coil in the plane of this coil this is your field this is your magnetic field horizontal this is your field is horizontal this is your field horizontal so if the plane of this coil is parallel to this magnetic field this plane is parallel to this your torque your torque of this rectangular coil will be n b i a it's maximum if the rectangular coil watch you this place what 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 this coil watch you this coil this place is called plane of the rectangular coil that's the plane this place this place is called the plane so if the plane is parallel to the what magnetic field this plane and the field are parallel this is the torque that this rectangular coil will experience it's going to experience a maximum torque when it's in this position because this is when you what your il your current and the length of this conductor and the, and the current flowing here this vector il is now perpendicular to your b maximum force is an experience when like this you have maximum force experience so you experience the maximum word torque now the second part is if the plane what you the plane of the conductor what means if the plane of the of the of the coil this coil of the coil is at angle theta to your magnetic field watch that second part if it's part if it's what at an angle theta to the magnetic field just like this this is the plane of the conductor it is no longer parallel this this is not the rectangular coil this is the rectangular coil this is your coil but this place this is your magnetic field is always horizontal but the plane this is magnetic field this is it your b your b the plane of the conductor is now making angle what theta to the what magnetic field take note of that if the plane this is called plane of the conductor this is the plane this is the plane if the plane is parallel to the magnetic field the torque is mbia you have to note all these three things if the plane of the conductor is now making an angle theta with the horizontal at this the what magnetic field this is your b this is your b this is your b if it's making an angle theta that means they are no longer parallel mine was like this this is the plane this is the field they are parallel but in this case the plane is now like this the field still remain like this they are now making angle plane of the conductor makes angle theta with the what magnetic field your torque here is n b i a what cos theta is n b i a cos theta take note of that is n b i a cos theta now the third one is in the plane sorry what what is it, what you if the angle what the angle between between the perpendicular perpendicular to the plane what you to the plane of the coil if the angle between the what perpendicular to the plane coil and the magnetic field and the magnetic field and the magnetic field is alpha watch that there is there is a perpendicular to the plane of the coil this is you don't forget this is your coil now this is your this is the plane of the coil is already it's not it's no longer what parallel like this not parallel this is the field they're not longer parallel like this again this is the what the plane of the coil watch this is the plane of the coil this is the plane of the coil you can see this is your coil this is your coil but in this case there is now 
There's a what? There's a perpendicular to the plane of the coil. <laughs> watch. The perpendicular, watch, to the plane of the coil. Right? There's a line perpendicular to this. Watch it. This is a line perpendicular to this. Let's call this line a perpendicular line. That's what? The angle between the plane. This is the plane. Watch. This is the plane of the coil. This is a perpendicular, which means a line, which means angle 90 degrees to this guy. Let me draw it for you. Let me draw it. Look at the board. I want to rub this. I want to rub this. I want to rub this. When they are parallel, it's NDIA. I want to rub this. I want to rub this. This is the plane of the coil. This is the plane of the coil. This is the coil. This is the coil. That's the coil. It's slanted. The coil is slanted. Now, now, angle between the perpendicular to the plane of the coil. There's a perpendicular to the plane. Where's the plane? This is the plane. Where's perpendicular to this plane? Something like this. I mean, a line making angle 90 degrees to this plane. This is the plane, and this is a line at angle 90 degrees to it. This is called a perpendicular to the plane of the coil. I mean, this line and this line are at angle 90 degrees to each other. This is your field. This is your B, your magnetic field. It's always horizontal in this case. So, don't forget, angle between the magnetic field and the plane of the coil is theta. Don't forget, yeah. So, like I was saying, in the first one, it was parallel. In the second one, the plane was inclined at an angle, I mean, at an angle to the field. So your thought of the MDIA cos theta. Now the third case is now what? If the angle between the perpendicular to the plane, I mean it's a perpendicular. Where is that? This is the plane. This is called perpendicular to the plane, which means a line making angle 90 degrees with the plane. You can see. Now the angle between the field and this is still theta. You can see. Why the angle between what? This and this is now what? Alpha. This is now what? Alpha. We call the angle between the perpendicular to the plane. This is called perpendicular to the plane. And this is called the field. So angle between the perpendicular and the field is called what? Alpha. This is alpha. So now what? about the torque in this case will be N B I A sine phi. All these things are proofs. Okay? But we don't need the proofs. So this is what? Talk for the for a case like this. Now, if you can if you can notice very well, the maximum torque will be experienced by the rectangular coil. Maximum torque is experienced by the rectangular coil only when the what? When the plane of the rectangular coil is what? Parallel to the magnetic field B. It's parallel to the magnetic field B. You must take note of that. You must take note of that. Okay, so let's see the next thing to do on this. Let's see the next thing. We will do examples later on all of these. Don't forget what theta is. Okay, don't forget about now. That what? How far plus theta is what? 90 degrees. You can see that here. You can see that here. In fact, if you place this theta, with 90 minus alpha, you have cos into this. Cos of this will be sine of this. So there's no big deal. You can derive this. To derive, if you derive this one, you can use this to derive this. How can we derive? How can we derive this one? No matter what, the torque is actually what? The force times what? Times distance. Okay, we have said that before. We, we got, we've already done before, we got B I L B. That was what we got when it was like we came back to it. We put this thing. 
refer back to the points in the notes. We got to talk as what? Well, B I L B. But if the word, if the plane is now at an angle theta to the field, that means your B is still this, your L is this length. This is the length. If you take this thing back to this place, yeah, this B will become B cos theta. Hope you agree with that because this is what? Add this hypotenuse, you can see. This hypotenuse, this adjacent. Hypotenuse and adjacent is what? Cos. So instead of using B here now, we we'll say what? It's now B I L. Your B is now what? B cos theta. And that was how we got B I L. I'm sorry, B I what? A. Because the length and its breadth is area. Cos theta. And we we'll say what? For n terms. For n terms. For n terms is n b i a cos theta for n terms for n terms for n terms. So if you now come back here, just I'm just trying to show you how we derive this. How we derive this? It was from the same b i l b, but in this case b is no longer b. It's not b cos theta because the force must be perpendicular to the wall, the distance. This is no longer perpendicular to this. This is no longer perpendicular to this. This line and this line are no longer perpendicular. The only line perpendicular to this is now this. See, this and this are now perpendicular. So to, to get this place now, I mean, we, are, we are doing what? We are projecting this here now. We are doing this one here now. That means this is what it is. This is on me, this is B. And this is what I put in us. This is what adjacent. That becomes what B cos theta. Because adjacent, adjacent what I put in us is cos theta. Adjacent, that's this means, I don't know, over B. That means you don't know, it's not B cos. It is B cos theta. So instead of B here now, which we use in this case, when the coil was parallel to the field, when the coil was parallel to the field, this and the plane were perpendicular. But now, the coil, this plane, is no longer parallel to the field. We have to take this thing down here to get B cos theta. All I'm saying is simple. All I'm saying is simple. See the summary of all I'm saying. I'm saying that what? When this thing was like this, here was length, here was breadth. So area was length and breadth. When this thing becomes something like this, when it becomes something like this, this T or B, this T or B, but this B is no longer perpendicular to this length again. So we need something perpendicular to this length. So now I have to extend here down like this. We draw this one also like that. So this and this are now perpendicular, just like this and this. So this place, and this place are now at and 90 degrees. So this B is now B cos theta, because here is what theta. How do you get that? If you are finding here, call it X. Now the cos theta equals to adjacent X over hypotenuse B. So S is B cos theta. S is B cos theta. So this place will be called B cos theta. So we don't need this B again. What I need is what B cos theta. So I will replace B with what B cos theta in our previous formula for this guy. Would I get what? B I L B cos theta. That's what B I L times B is A. Area. Length times breadth is area and cos theta. So we have what? For one term, we have N B I A cos theta. And I say that what? In this place, to prove this one, to prove that torque is N B I A sin alpha, what do you say? From this place here, torque is N B I A cos theta. And we said that what here, I've said this before, that alpha plus theta is what? 90. That means what? Theta will be 90 minus alpha. If you now put down in our words, you now have N B I A cos theta is what? 90 minus alpha. And that's what? N B I A Cos 90 minus alpha is what? Sine alpha. That's the proof. Cos this guy, press it. Cos 90 minus alpha, 
Because 90 and it's alpha is the same as sine alpha. You must take note of that. It's the same thing as what sine alpha. If you put this alpha as 30 degrees, it will be 90 minus 30, that will be 60. Then it becomes sine 30. If alpha is 30, then it becomes sine 30. Sine 30, then it becomes plus 60. Because 60 is the same as what sine 30. Because 60 is the same as sine 30. That's how, that's how what this. That's why this one is what is this. So take note of that. That's a proof. Very simple proof. Let's go to the next aspect. Let's write. This is today's, today's work. Today's work. Today's work. Let's write. So you have what? Sources of the magnetic field. Sources. Sources of the magnetic field. Sources of the magnetic field. And put in brackets, Biot Savat Biot Savat law. Now, if you recall what we said before, so we said sources of the magnetic field. Now, if you recall what Austin said, Austin, what did Austin say? Austin said a current carrying conductor, a current carrying conductor will establish or will create a magnetic field. What a statement. And that statement is considered to be a qualitative statement. It's a qualitative statement. The statement only let us know that what a current carrying conductor will establish a magnetic field. Agreed. Agreed. It's tested. He proved it. I should improve. When he placed a needle across a current carrying conductor, and it, the needle was what? Deflected. The needle was deflected. Now, that's positive. He gave us a qualitative statement. Now, we have these two guys, Biot and Sabbath, in their law, Biot Sabbath law. They gave us a quantitative statement. A quantitative statement of by I mean of what Austin. They quantify Austin's statement. They made of Austin's statement quantity. They calculated. They gave us value. For instance, if I say this is a conductor and it's carrying current, and I say to establish a magnetic field, I have thought. Talk is cheap, but it's proven. He has proven it. But, but someone said, okay, good. Austin's principle is very correct. But let's see, how much magnetic field will this conductor carry? How much? But our staff calculated the exact magnetic field that the current carrying conductor will have. Different conductors were used. We have straight conductor. We have straight current carrying conductor. We have solenoid. We have solenoid. These are different coils. These are different current carrying conductors. We have we have circular coil. Circular coil. We have toroid. We have toroid. We have so many different kinds of coil. Austin said all these coils will carry current. But how much? I mean, all these coils carrying current will create what? Magnetic field. But how much current will they carry? How much magnetic field is created because of the current they are carrying? That's what Obal Sabat did. That was what he did. Obal Sabat quantified. He quantified. Okay? Just like somebody asking you, someone is asking you, have you eaten? And somebody gives you, on the mirror, go and eat. Someone that asks you, have you eaten? It's just a qualitative statement. Someone that gave you money to go and eat is giving you a quantitative statement. That means what? It's action. And it's what? It's statement. It's what? Action. 
This one quantify. It quantify the current the conductor is carrying. Or it quantify the magnetic field created as a result of the current the conductor carried. It gave us a formula. It said what? The magnitude of the magnetic field a conductor will carry is given as what? R dl sine theta all over 4 pi r squared. All over 4 pi r squared. You have I dl sine theta over 4 pi r squared, which means that what? The magnitude of the field created, the magnitude of the field created by a current carrying conductor is directly what? Proportional to the current, is directly proportional to the length. That's G the length, but it's D, D, D also. It's directly what? Proportional to the what? Sin theta. And it's inversely proportional to R squared. To the square of R. What does R stand for? If this, if this is a current carrying conductor, and I'm taking an elemental part, a small part, a, a small portion of this, of this current carrying conductor, carrying current I. This is what? A small length, DL. That's a small length, DL. And somebody stands here. This is somebody standing here. The distance of this place to this place is what is called what? R. So distance, this R means what? Distance from a, any point P to the current carrying what? Conductor. Distance of any point P to the current current conductor is called R. Now, the closer you are to the current current conductor, the closer you get, the what? The less, I mean, the more the magnetic field you will experience. If you move close to the current current conductor, you are influenced more by the magnetic field created by this conductor carrying what current. And the further away you move from the current carrying conductor, the what? The less the influence or the magnetic field created by this current carrying conductor. This is a small, like an elemental part, the L. Small, just small portion of this, of this whole wire, the L. That's why I'm also using what? DB. If we integrate this, we will get the actual B for each of these conductors. That's for I mean, that's what? How Sabbath, let me come again in, 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 in little ways. Hosted only thought. Though his thought is very important. Hosted gave us a qualitative statement. He said, every current carrying conductor establishes magnetic field. Who knows for him? Now, Bao Sabbath said, a current carrying conductor, he told us, a conductor carrying current we establish a magnetic field accepted with what was it? And the magnitude of the magnetic field created by the current was calculated for different conductors. This is a general statement for us for biostatics. Let's write some notes. Let's write. Write this. Write. Let's write. Let's write. Biostatics. Biostabat is used, sorry, Biostabat law, Biostabat law is used to calculate, Biostabat law is used to calculate, is used to calculate, is used to calculate, is used to calculate, the magnetic field produced is used to calculate the magnetic field produced at a point in space is used to calculate the magnetic field produced at a point in space is used to calculate the magnetic field produced at a point in space due to a small current element due to a small current element due to a small current element Due to a small current element, in bracket, DL. Due to a small current element, in bracket, DL. There's so much rain, there's so much noise in the class, there's so much rain here. Due to a small current element, in bracket, DL. Full stop. 
GL, that's this GL, this guy, GL, GL, full stop, full stop. The law is a quantitative experiment. The law is a quantitative experiment of the work of hosting. The law is a quantitative experiment of the work of hosting. Of the work of hosting discovery. Of the work of hosting discovery. Of the work of hosting discovery. Full stop. Full stop. It is a mathematical expression. It is a mathematical expression. It is a mathematical expression which gives the magnetic field, which gives the magnetic field, which gives the magnetic field at some point in space, at some point in space, at some point in space, due to electric current. At some point in space, due to electric work current. To stop. Right. It states that, it states that, Bao Sanat Law states that, Bao Sanat Law states that, Bao Sanat Law states that, what is it now? Bao Sanat Law states that, the magnitude, the magnitude, of the magnetic field dB, the magnitude of the magnetic field dB, the magnitude of the magnetic field dB is directly proportional, is directly proportional, is directly proportional, is directly proportional to, 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 so, right, GL, that's one, current, sine theta, is directly what proportional to GL, I, and sine theta, and inversely proportional, and inversely proportional, and inversely proportional to R squared. And inversely proportional to R squared. Right. Where R is the distance? Where R is the distance from the L to any point P? From the L to any point P, you will draw this. From the L to any point P. Where R is the what? Distance from the L to any point P. Right. Right. I is the magnitude of the current of the conductor. I is the magnitude of the current of the conductor. And theta is the angle between theta is the angle between dl and r. Theta is the angle between dl and what? And r. To stop. Right. According to bio Sabbath, according to bio Sabbath, according to bio Sabbath, right. DB is proportional to I, DL, sin theta, all over R squared. All over R squared. If you remove this sign now, you remove this sign, though in the one I gave before, my focus was on I, DL, sin, and this. That's the focus. These are the real parameters. There is a constant. Your DB will be equal to bring a constant. Mu naught all over 4 pi. That's a constant. This is a constant. Mu naught over 4 pi. Then what? Into I, DL, 
sin theta all over r squared. This is a vector db. This is a small element I'm considering. Of this whole conductor, I will take an elemental part, small part. That's why it is like this. This is the whole length of this guy. This is the whole length. L. But because I'm considering a small fraction of this, I select the length of this small fraction. The what? Be the L. Small length, the L. Okay? This small length, the L, is of the whole length, will give me a magnetic field, also dB. Is that okay now? Because it's not the whole length. The whole length, L, will give you B. But the small length, the L, will give you what? dB. That should, that should be clear in, in calculus. When you have small, small fraction considered, you should get what? Also, small magnetic field corresponding to that work, elemental part, small part, a fraction. If you consider the whole length, that means what? I will integrate this expression. If I integrate this expression, it means I will go and consider the small, small fraction, small, small fraction, I will get the field due to this small fraction. Another one, this small fraction, another one, because this small fraction, I will now integrate all together. To integrate means to add together. So, the magnetic field due to a very small elemental part, a very small part, a very small portion of this conductor is what? Is the B. Where the length and consume is also the L. The L is smaller than L. The B is smaller than B. For the integration of this whole magnetic field, for the whole length of the conductor, will give me B. Will give me B. So, what do we call theta? Theta is the angle between your dl, this length, this length, this length here, this whole length, and your theta, and your what? Your r. Angle between this length and this r is called theta. r means what? Distance from this dl to any point p in space, any point you are considering. If you always stand here, try to explain the field created by this elemental part. Let's do this. Let's do it. Right. Right. Not the following. Not the following. Not the following. One. Not the following. One. The vector db. The vector db. The vector db. The vector db. Is perpendicular to dl. The vector db is perpendicular to dl. Is perpendicular to dl. Right, also. Mu naught, where 4 pi is a constant. You can see that word is a constant, you can see that. But this is proportional. This is directly what? Proportional to the current this thing is carrying. If you carry more current, you create more magnetic field. It's proportional to DL. The longer the, 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 the longer the conductor, the more the magnetic field. And it's proportional to the sign of the angle between there. That means that the angle between here and here. The more the angle, the more the magnetic field. But inversely proportional to R squared, which means your R means what? This time from here to here. So the farther you are from the conductor, the lower the value of the field. You experience not created you experience okay you are the one here the point p is here the field at this point due to this guy is our db let's go let's stop so what is mu naught your mu naught is called what what's it called it's called permeability this is called permeability 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 of free space of free space is called permeability of free space so right mu naught is always 4 pi times 10 is power minus 7 meter sorry every per meter every per meter that's mu naught 4 pi times 4 pi times 10 is power what minus 7 every per meter is is analogous to permittivity in electric field. 
permit you to ask him now. Let's go, please. Let's go. Let's go. Now, what do we do now, please? Look at the board. See what was in our servant has given to us. See what he has given us. He has told us that what? If you want to calculate the magnetic field established by different conductors, go for this. Now, when the conductor is mentioned, you can now know what magnetic field you will calculate for that conductor. This equation will be integrated for different conductors to not get their own magnetic field. For instance, if I say solenoid, when I mention a solenoid, you integrate this expression for solenoid, I will get a B value, not the B, a B value, but the whole length of the solenoid will be what? Integrated. If I say a straight current carrying conductor, I will integrate it for that. For instance, for solenoid, for solenoid, for solenoid, B for solenoid is mu mi all over 2 pi r. Let me put 2 pi a. 2 pi a. Okay? That's mu for a solenoid. Mu for a solenoid. A I want to do for a straight conductor. B for a straight current carrying conductor. I have what? Mu ni all over 2 what? 2 r. Where r here means r in this case means what? The distance from the conductor to the what? So the distance is from 2 pi over what? Over l. Over l. This is over l. Where l is the what? Length. Let me come again. For B for solenoid is what? Mu naught ni over l. Where l is the length of the solenoid. Now, if you have B for a toroid, a toroid, your solenoid is like this. This solenoid, like coil, which has a length. Your toroid is now a solenoid, which can be shaped like a circle. Your toroid is like this. Your toroid is like this. Like a circular, a circular in shape, like this. So for a toroid, we have new knot. Ni all over 2 pi a. Where a here? A here means radius of that solenoid. Radius of this of the, of the toroid. Radius of the toroid. Radius of the toroid. B for a straight conductor. If you have a straight conductor mentioned, a straight conductor mentioned. For a straight conductor mentioned, your B is what? Mu naught Ni. All over two what? All over two R. Where for a straight conductor, from here to a point P is your R. So here, this R means what? The distance of a, a, a point in space from that straight conductor. So, what am I saying exactly? What am I saying exactly? I am saying that what? See what I'm saying? I am saying that what? Bao Sabat. Bao Sabat said, the B value is calculated using what? This expression. The magnetic field created by a current carrying conductor is calculated using this. But I say what? I've not mentioned any conductor. If I now start mentioning conductors, if I start mentioning conductors, I will start having B values for each of the conductors. Now, I will integrate this for any named conductor. But the integration is not in Jupiter syllables. Just the final, just the final expression, that's all. The integration is not in Jupiter syllables. So for a straight conductor, for a straight conductor, your B value is mu naught Ni over 2R. Most times, I don't put N in straight conductor. But N means number of terms. 
Okay, they don't put n. I only put n for this object one, two, they all have the same numerator. They all have the same numerator. If n is not given, number of terms is not given, call n1. Those are examples you understand better. So I say, well, if you integrate this thing for a straight conductor, you will get this. If you integrate this for a solenoid, you will get this. If you integrate this for toroid, you will get this. Let's try this. Let's try. Let's try fast. Let's try. The integration, the integration of the above, the integration of the above about Savat equation, the integration of the above by Savat equation gives magnetic field for different current carrying conductors. Gives the magnetic field for different current carrying conductors. I want to integrate it now. Once the conductor is mentioned, what is the B value? So for for solenoid, for solenoid, B equals, I said that before, mu naught n i all over L. That's solenoid. Where n is number of tons, number of tons of coil. Number two, I will go next for a toroid. I don't have toroid in my notes, but I have it here. For toroid, for toroid, B for toroid is what? mu naught n i all over 2 pi a where a is called radius where a is radius a is radius it's on the board for number three for long straight conductor long straight current carrying conductor long straight current carrying conductor your b is i said that already mu naught n i n will not be here is N is not a over what? Over 2R. Where R means what? What does R mean? For long straight conductor, oh, sorry, this is 2 pi R. It's 2 pi R. That's a mistake. It's 2 pi R. It's 2 pi R. For long straight conductor, it's new, not NI, over 2 pi R. Where R is what? R is the what? Distance from the conductor. I've said it. This is a long straight conductor. This time of this another part, this is your R. From that part to the point in consideration. That's that. So let's see this one. Right. For narrow circular core, when you hear narrow circular core, narrow circular core, narrow circular core, at the center, at the center, is the node. For narrow circular coil at the center, is note B equals mu i, mu not i, all over, mu not i, all over 2 r. For narrow circular coil, see the ball. There are two things here. Once you hear these names, please put your B values in your head. I'm not doing an exam. I am not supposed to cram any of these. They are doing an exam. So what do you do? Let the ball. Yeah, this, see, see an example. I will say a solenoid. No, I will say calculate the magnetic field due to a solenoid of length two meters carrying current two amperes. Because they have set a solenoid, this is the formula. We don't apply and get out. You know what new knot is? This new knot. So they are giving you. They are saying a solenoid. A solenoid coil with 500 tons. A solenoid coil with 500 tons. That means N is 500. Number of tons, 500. And if number of tons is not mentioned, use that word one. Call number of tons, one. If it's not mentioned, call it what? One. A, a solenoid of 500 tons, length 2 meters, carry 2 amperes current. Find the magnetic field due to it. Oton, new not N over L. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you have to mention that. You may not throw it. If you mention throw it, apply it. If you mention lock straight control, apply it now. If you mention narrow circular coil, there are two things, there are two conditions. Narrow 
circular core, there are two. At the center, you apply this. Where R is the radius of the core. Remember, it's circular. Don't mistake this R. Don't make mistake. R is, R is what? Okay, let's say about 2A. Let's say about 2A. Oh, let's use 2R. Because of where I'm going to next. Let's use 2R. But just notice that what? It's a circular core now. Circular. The circle must have radius now. So this is radius. Here also is the toroid. The toroid is, is like a circular solenoid. It's circular. So A here is what? Radius. I'm just, I'm just like use symbols that we, you understand. If you look at it, you can put R here and call it radio. This R is not radio. This R is what? This star from point P to this. Only for a straight conductor. Now watch. At the center. At the center. These are formula. If it's at the wall, center. And R here represents what? Radius. Circular core. Then let's go. Let's go. And what? Everybody. It's because the tools are not required that we do this. Let's not see narrow circular core along its axis. Number five. Narrow, narrow circular core. Narrow circular core along its axis. Narrow circular coil along its axis. Look at the board. This is narrow circular coil. Watch it. This is the coil. This is the elemental part I'm considering. The small portion of the considering. This is the small portion I'm considering. This is the center of the coil. I call it what? This is the radius of the coil. This is any point P. This is from. Just by the board. There are two things on the board here. This thing has a radius. This is very kind of coin. This is a black coin. This is a black coin. I'm considering an elemental part DL, which will give me a DB here. A DB here. And that DB is perpendicular to DL. Oh, you know that I said that. That is what? The DB will turn like this. As a 90 to this thing, to this line. Let's forget that one. So this has a DB. That is what? Because I'm considering a small portion of this whole core in an elemental part, somebody here can fill the field. And somebody that stands at the center here can also fill the field. Look at the board. This is called center. This is called along the axis. This is the axis. Along the axis. If you sit at the center here, the magnetic field you will experience because you are sitting at the center is simply what? It's simply this. No, you call it simply A, please. Call it A. I hope you know that what all this I'm saying, I'm doing, changing out to A, is not really relevant. I'm not trying to reduce confusion as much as I can. You have called A here A radius. I've called A here also radius. And I call this our distance. So let me maintain A as radius. Now, from if you stand, if you stand here, if you are here, how to maintain A as radius? Let me see. Let me just maintain A as radius, please. There's no big deal. If you like, call here radius R and call here A. It's your personal decision. Just define your symbol. Now, I'm telling you, now, for the last time, call, let's call A radius. Let's call A radius. Let's call this R A. Distance from that element. Distance of this guy, see? It is the element I'm considering. This time from here to here, I want to maintain it as R. Why do I choose to use R? Because R is contained in Bao Sabbath. But it's not a must to use R. It's not a must to use R. Nobody can force you to use R or A. That's how I'm defining my symbols. When you say circular, you know that anything here is radius. When you say toroid, it's a circular, it's also that A is radial. When you say long straight conductor, you know that R is not radius. It's just a length. This time of year to year. So, the stance of this conductor to any point in here, call it what? R. Right? This time from here to the center of the circle, call it what? A. Call it A. If you are doing it, call it what? A. This, there are, there are two things. If you stand here for this straight conductor, you will experience the magnetic field created as a result of this guy carrying current. 
this guy. If you stay here, you will experience the magnetic field as a result of this guy. That's what DB. Due to you standing at the center. If you also stand here, you will still experience magnetic field due to this element. There are two places you can have the magnetic field result along. Along the center of the coil or along the what? Along the axis of the coil. That's along this line. Now, hold on please. The axis of the coil is this. This coil axis of the coil. This is the axis. This is the center of the coil. This is just a distance from what? An element I'm considering to any point P in space. Anyone that stands here, you experience a magnetic field. If you stand here, you experience a magnetic field. There are now two fields. Magnetic field you experience if you stand at the center here, this is it. But the magnetic field you experience when you stand here is called, let's call it X. We define the same words. We know what R stands for. How mean the distance of the element P from the element, oh, sorry, how mean the distance of the point P in space from the element. A means radius of the coil, and X means distance along the axis of the coil. I will define them. So let's see. This is the axis of the coil. This is the center of the coil. Let's see. Right. The magnetic field along the axis for this narrow circular coil is given as right. Mu naught and I A squared all over. 2i raised to the power 3. 2i raised to the power 3. 2i, that means what? That means I have solved the Sabbath equation. I have integrated the Sabbath equation and I got this. That's the meaning. I integrated it and I got this. You just know it. Just know it. What does A stand for? You know, everybody asks me or not. Everybody asks me. Everybody asks I. If it were you, that's. Study my brain. You now have a square over r in here. Take note. Now, Sabbath law. I solved the equation. I integrated it for narrow circular coil along the axis. And I got this. In order to learn how to integrate it, let's get to the two. We will now see how to integrate it. Now, this r here, r squared equals a squared plus x squared. You are doing it with me. This is the right hand triangle. R squared is a squared plus x squared. Square on the hypotenuse equals square from the squares on the other sides. That means that what? You can go ahead and go on and on and do some more rubbish. And do some more rubbish from here. Consider what? Consider what? R is a squared plus x squared. Raised by what? R. When 2 goes there, it becomes square root. When square goes there, it becomes square root. What that means is that what? I just found the square root of this. Square root means what? Root of 4 means 4 is power half. Root of 10 means 10 is power half. So if this one goes there, it becomes this is power half. So what they have now? Your R, you make R the subject of formula. The square goes there, it becomes half. That's why find the word. Root of 10. That's 10 power what? R. Root of 4 is 4 is power R. Like that. So when it goes, it becomes square root of this. So that what? This is power what? R. Then from B along the axis, what's B on the axis? Is what? Mu naught Ni A is power what? 32. All the odds. So R is power 3. So we take this R with this. We place the R with this. So we have what? The B along the axis will be mu naught ni a squared all over 2. Your R is this. That's what? A squared plus x squared raised power what? R. All raised power what? Because it's starting 3. Raised power 3. Now, this power, this power, we multiply powers. That was mu naught ni a squared all over 2 bracket a squared plus x squared 
this after his training, that was training over two. This is the magnetic field along the axis of the conductor. Now, you, can see, you have seen it already. We have field at, at, at the center. Is a big value at the center? Is a big value at this, at, along this axis? There are two values of B. Once a narrow coil is mentioned, a narrow circular coil is mentioned. Narrow circular coil is mentioned. There is a B at the center. If you stand at the center, what magnetic field will you experience if you stand here? That's what I gave before. If you stand at point E, what field will you experience? That's called magnetic field along the axis of the circular coil. Now, I've told you, what does A stand for? In this symbol, in this formula, what does A stand for? Radius of the circular coil. A is the radius of the circular coil. A is the radius of the circular coil. Radius of the circular coil. Okay, what, does, what does R stand for? R means what? Distance. Distance of P, yes, of P from the element. This is the element here. We consider an element. A small portion of this body was considered. A small portion, not the whole body. The length of this whole thing is the circumference of the circle. And that's 2 pi a. Length of this whole circle means circumference of this thing. The circumference of this thing is 2 pi a. That will be used in the proof. It's used in the proof, okay? It's carrying current what? Current i is flowing in this coil. And it's creating magnetic field. Around the center and around the world axis. So around the center and around the world, the axis of the coil. So how is distance of P from the element? From the element. This is the element. This is the element. Okay? Now what does S stand for? S is also what? Distance. Distance of P, of this same P, from the center of the circle, from the center of the coil. From the center of the coil, of the coil, from the center, that's from here to here. That's what the word for X is. Distance from the center of the coil. A is the radius of the coil. R is the distance of the speed from the element. These are things we use in the word, in the formula. In the formula. So, let us go to it. Anytime you are dealing with what? Narrow circular coil. Let us determine, is it, are you finding B? at the center of B along the axis of the coil. Along the axis of the coil. So this is where we do what we will draw the cutting for today, okay? Now in next class we shall start with what we start with calculations, examples and all these to conclude the topic. Rather than, rather than check the word the initial video, the initial class before this class, you must watch the initial video before this class or get your notes before this class. This class alone cannot stand this class cannot stand alone. We did the initial work class. Thank you and have a good afternoon. Bye bye.